Hello students, welcome to this lecture on efficiency. The concept of efficiency is essential to our efforts to understand environmental economics. You see, how do we know if what we're doing will make an improvement in overall social benefit if we can't have some measure? And so it turns out that the best measure that we can use is the measure of efficiency. So improvements in efficiency or things that cause efficiency to be less will be determinants of our success. So what is efficiency? Well, as economists, we measure efficiency as the combination of consumer utility and producer profits or consumer surplus and producer surplus. We can see this on the supply and demand curve because everything above the price level and up to the demand curve represents consumer surplus. Uh, everything below the price and down to the supply curve is the measure of profit. When we combine those two, then we have the measure of efficiency. If we can increase the size of that triangle, whether it's increasing consumer surplus or producer surplus, then we have increased efficiency. Now, one of the first thoughts that students have is, well, Dr. Thomas, wouldn't it be better to increase the consumer surplus so that the greedy capitalists are making all the profits and, and leaving the poor consumer to barely get by? And the answer to that is no. It makes no difference, and here's why. What is a firm? What is a producer? Well, it turns out that corporations and firms don't actually exist at all. They're fabrications on paper that we create through government fiat that says, okay, there's going to be a, a corporation, there's going to be a firm. But the firms don't have brains. Firms don't have hands. Firms are made up of people who do things. Now, who are those people? Well, there are employees, there are vendors, there are stockholders, there are executives who are also employees, and um, these various people are behind the veil of the corporation. The one that we would be concerned most about, of course, would be the stockholders, because we would say, oh, well, the stockholders, they make all these profits. But who are these stockholders? What do they look like? Well, in some cases, they look like a Jeff Bezos or a Bill Gates. But uh, in most cases, the vast majority of stockholders in corporations in America are little old widows. Now, why do I say that? Because most of the stock that's held in corporations can be found in retirement accounts of people who are elderly and rely on the dividends and profits from those stocks in order to live. Now, women on the average live about six to eight years longer than men. And so what we have is we have a large number of the elderly are single women, and these women are relying on these accounts to, to uh, provide their income. And so when we cut corporate profits, when we tax corporations, we are putting a tax on those people. Now, of course, there are also, you know, the Jeff Bezos of the world, but you can't separate those out because the vast majority are these others. And so, do we have really a right to say who should have uh, the gains in the economy? Should it be the average consumer or should it be a retired elderly woman who is a widow? I think we have to back off and say, it doesn't really matter. It's not for us to say. So how do we increase these? That's what we're going to have to determine. However, the improvements that we can make fall into three theoretical categories. The first of these is what we call a Marshallian improvement, named after Alfred Marshall, who was a famous economist from Great Britain, uh, Cambridge, and who was the mentor of John Maynard Keynes. Alfred Marshall invented the supply and demand curve and gave us much of what we look at in terms of macroeconomics. Alfred Marshall basically told us that in order for us to measure the improvements in the economy, we have to look at 
trade. And we have to look at the gains from consumers and producers in when they exchange goods. We know that these are improvements because free trade, if there's full information, is always better for both parties by definition. So we know that both the supplier and the consumer gained from the trade and we have an improvement.